Hello, my name is Simon Wardley, and I'm the inventor of Wardley Maps. I'm delighted to be here today uh, to speak about this subject. I'm going to talk about a number of things, uh, doctrine, patents, anticipation, gameplay, but I thought I'd start off with the origin of Wardley Maps and what is a map. So the origin for me was back in 2005. I was working for this company, uh, for Tango. It's an online photo service with about 16 different lines of business. Now I had a problem. The problem was the CEO. The CEO was completely clueless. Despite the company making uh, you know, huge profits and growing revenue, they had no idea what they were doing. And I know this because I was the CEO. I used to talk about strategy but I really was just grabbing words, making things up. And so I used to read every book I could find and I was getting nowhere. But still, we're revenue growing, we're very profitable. And then I ended up in a bookshop in London, in Charing Cross. And I was talking to the bookseller and she asked me, had I ever read Sun Tzu's The Art of War? Which I had. She persuaded me to buy two different copies. They're all translations. And I'm very grateful for that moment. The reason being is that in the reading of the second version, I noticed the particular pattern. Sun Tzu talked about five factors that mattered in competition. That purpose, landscape, climactic patterns, doctrine, and leadership. This overlaps with something created by John Boyd, the mad major of a US Air Force pilot called the OODA loop. The first O of the Uda loop is to observe the environment. That's what landscape and climactic patterns are about. What your landscape looks like and how it's changing. Then you need to orientate yourself around the space. And that's what doctrine and principles are about. Then you need to decide where to attack and you act. And that's what leadership is about. So the two actually overlap nicely together. And at the heart of this are two whys. The why of purpose, why am I doing something? And the why of movement. Why do I make this choice over that choice? So using this cycle, I got really into the subject of, of landscape. And I started to look at the concept of maps. So I asked everybody in my organization, send me the maps that you use. And I got lots of maps. Mind maps, business process maps, systems maps. And this is one. And I took this systems map and I looked at the component CRM, customer relationship management and simply moved it across the screen. And I asked, how has the map changed? And the answer is, it hasn't. Still the same nodes, still the same connections. Now that's odd, because if I take a map of the world and I move Australia and put it, say, next to the UK, that has fundamentally changed the map. So why hasn't this map changed? And the answer is, it's not a map, it's a graph. So to explain the difference, and it's important to understand that maps are not the same as graphs. The three images at the top are all identical, and they're all graphs. Three different locations connected by two roads. The three images at the bottom are all completely different. They're all maps. Again, three locations connected by two different roads. The fundamental difference between a map and a graph is that in a map, space has meaning which is why they're very useful for looking at landscapes, whether we're talking territorial landscapes or economic landscapes. Now, in order to do this, you need three basic components. You need an anchor, such as magnetic north, if we're talking geography. You need the position of pieces relative to each other. This is north, this is south of this. And you need consistency of movement. So I took those ideas and thought, right, how can I map a business using this? So I started with something very simple, a tea shop. What's the anchor going to be? Well, I've got consumers who hopefully want to drink cups of tea, and I've got the business who wants to sell cups of tea. Okay, so I've got two anchors there. I could have more. I could have regulators, but we'll start with those two. Now, a cup of tea needs other things. It needs tea. It needs a cup. It needs hot water. Hot water needs cold water. Uh, and that needs a kettle, and a kettle needs power. So what I've got is a chain of needs, and that chain of needs describes position. We do it through a concept known as visibility. So the nearer something is, 
um, to, to the consumer, the more visible it is, i.e., the cup of tea is very visible to the consumer, but the power is far removed. Now, that's anchor and position, but I also need movement. And it turns out that each of those forms of capital are actually evolving through a common pattern. We start off with the genesis of the novel and new, custom-built examples, products and rental services, commodity and utility services. So simply by putting things where we think they are, is this more of a commodity? Is it more custom built? Now we've got anchor, position, and movement. And that is a map. And if you move anything on this map, it changes its fundamental meaning. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm exposing my assumptions so that other people can see those assumptions and challenge what, I, what I'm thinking. And so I'll give you an example of this. It comes from an insurance company, and this is roughly 2011. They had a problem. They needed compute. They would order server. Server would go into goods in, and they would mount and rack and modify the, these servers. And they had a bottleneck. And so they spent six months working on this problem to get rid of the bottleneck. And they put these wonderful business cases together, return investment calculations, and they were about to spend it with many millions uh, putting robots in place. And I was asked, what did I think to this problem? Well, the problem is they'd created a story. And the problem with stories is that if you, well, we have an industry which goes around telling people that to be a great leader, you've got to be a great storyteller. So if you challenge somebody's story, you're actually saying you're not a great leader. So it's really difficult to challenge somebody's story. So I asked them, could you just map this? So they put a map together. It took about 15 minutes. They started off with user needs compute, compute order server, order server, server, goods in. And I can see the map and I can see the assumptions that they're making. So I simply asked them a question, why have you put rack in custom built? And it turned out they had custom built racks. So then I asked, what are the modifications you're making to service? Well, they don't fit our racks. So we have to take cases off, drill new holes, add new plates, in order to get them to fit our racks. And that's why you need robots, yes. And somebody in the room, remember, they'd been spent six months working on this problem. This was about 15 minutes later, simply went, why don't we use standard racks? And that's a basic problem we see uh, in organizations. You start off, um, you know, what they were trying to do was optimize what is called process flow. What they should have been doing is optimizing evolutionary flow. So it's not about making the process more and more efficient. It's about realizing that a key part of that process has industrialized. It's become more of a commodity. We shouldn't be operating in this way. Now, these people weren't daft. Unfortunately, they were just simply trapped by past experience and past stories. And that, I'm afraid, is common. Now, this form of mapping has been used um, for uh, in space, even, um, uh, there was a carbon map, a satellite worked on between multiple groups, NASA and Planet, which they use maps to communicate with these form of maps. It's also been heavily used in areas like government. Uh, Liam Maxwell um, was uh, part of UK government. They, they saved several hundred million just in one project alone by, by mapping it out. So what I want you to remember from the talk today is First of all, the origin of maps. I mean, started 17 years ago. It was born out of practice and need. The second thing is that maps are not graphs. And when building a map, think about your users. Think about the user needs. Know the details. Understand the components in the supply chain. Understand uh, what that actually means, how evolved those components are. And most importantly, challenge assumptions. Thank you.